Hello, hello, my YouTube family. I am Shaniqua, and this is Imperfectly Neat. If you are new here, welcome, and if you are returning, welcome back. Today, we will be making these beautiful tumblers that you see pictured here. These tumblers are created with real parsley. Yes, that is correct, real parsley. I will be showing you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create this amazing look. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, share, and ring that notification bell so you can know when I post my new videos. Let's get into this. The parsley flakes that I'm using is a bulk option from a local restaurant store, but you can get parsley flakes from any store that sells any kind of herbs or seasonings. I know, I know, you're wondering why I have a blender. So I don't like the bigger and thicker flakes that this parsley flakes comes in. I like it to be thinner and finer and that way the application to the tumbler will be a lot easier and it'll minimize how many coats of epoxy I will have to do. So think of it as chunky glitter. The chunkier or the bigger the flakes are, the longer or thicker your epoxy coat has to be. So I have gone ahead and poured the parsley into the blender. This is just a normal ninja blender that you'll see here. Um, it's just the one that I had downstairs in my kitchen. So this particular blender had a variety of settings or chopping methods. I just went back and forth between pulse and chop. You will have to determine the length and frequency in which you want to pulse or chop this. I wanted my pieces really fine, but if you wanted larger pieces or more visible pieces, then you can just do it at a reduced amount. So after a while, I have gotten it to the place that I want it to be and the fine consistency. So you can see here how much of a difference it was from when I originally put the parsley flakes into the blender. They are a lot finer and so now I'm just funneling it back in to my container. Okay, so after I have made a mess, this is the final product. I am absolutely in love with this consistency and I'm excited to get ready to apply it to my tumblers. So I have spray painted these two tumblers green. These are two 32 ounce tumblers that I got off of Amazon and the green spray paint I got from Walmart. So I'm using my normal method of application which is the epoxy method and I am spreading the epoxy on both of these tumblers to prepare for the parsley to be applied. I want to make sure that my tumblers are going to get all of the parsley flakes so I'm going to hit it with the heat gun just in case any portions dried out. So now I'm going to apply the parsley just like I would any kind of glitter. Sprinkle it on there and make sure that I have a piece of paper or parchment paper underneath to collect the fallen parsley to funnel back into the bottle. So here are both of the tumblers after they have been completely coated in parsley. I also made sure I got the bottom of the tumblers. So now I'm going to seal these with these this Krylon clear glaze sealant. It is the triple thick crystal clear glaze. I, it is such a mouthful to say that, but yes. Yeah, so that is what I use to seal these tumblers so that this parsley will stick to it and the parsley will not move when I epoxy the tumbler. After sealing these tumblers, I went ahead and let them dry for about four hours and then I was ready to epoxy them. So I started epoxying from the bottom of the tumbler to the top but realized there was way too much movement in the parsley. I would have normally done another coat of sealant but I just didn't have the time. So I just epoxied the top and then epoxied the bottom. So you'll see me dipping my finger into the epoxy and going over all of the top layer. And then I will go over all of the bottom layer and then the epoxy will kind of meet in the middle. I know that kind of sounds confusing, but make sure you're watching because this is exactly how I did it. And this is how you can do it just to make sure any of the parsley is not moving. Or you can do another sealant if you have time.
after I finish getting the bottom of this tumbler, I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing I did to this one on the other tumbler in the back. At this point, I have finished epoxying both of these tumblers and I prepared to hit it with the heat gun so that I can pop any air bubbles that are visible to the eye. Now that doesn't mean I'm gonna get every single air bubble. I know that I'm probably gonna have to do a second coat of epoxy, but I wanna try to minimize how many air bubbles are on it at this point. These tumblers have now spun overnight and dried, but you can see that it is very rough to the touch. It is not smooth at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and sand these tumblers down and then do another coat of epoxy. So just normal like you would sand any other tumbler, I'm just sanding all the little bumpy parts so that I make sure that it is smooth to the touch. Now these tumblers have been completely sanded and they are ready for their next coat of epoxy. On this one, I can go from the top of the tumbler to the bottom because I don't have to worry about the parsley moving. And as always with any ending of epoxying, I'm gonna make sure I'm hitting this tumbler with my handy dandy heat gun. Here is the tumbler after its final coat of epoxy. I am so happy with this final product. Now I am doing this as a football tumbler, but please keep in mind, you can do this for soccer, lacrosse, any type of sport where there is going to be a grass turf to it and you wanna add such a great effect to this tumbler. On the top and the bottom of this tumbler, there will be the football lines. So I have to take my measuring tape to measure around the circumference of the tumbler to make sure that I make it long enough or short enough to fit around the tumbler. So I'm basically taking your normal tape and just measuring what it will be and how long I need to cut out the lines. So when I cut out my lines, for the bottom, I know that it needs to be 10 inches long to be able to fit around the entire bottom. Now I do do it a little over 10 inches just to make sure I have some play room just in case I under measured. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the top to make sure I know how long I need the top lines to go as well. So at this point, I had already done this measurement and already cut out my lines, but I wanted to demonstrate how I decide how long it needs to be. My client requested this tumbler to be Green Bay Packers theme, so I printed out their logo using printable vinyl, and I just printed it on my printer and then cut it out with my Cricut machine into the perfect circle. If you don't know this trick, I'm about to change your life. Use a neck pillow like you would use on an airplane to stabilize your tumblers as you apply your vinyl. I am telling you, it is the best in the world, and it reduces any movement or any error that you can do as you're applying your vinyl. Now I am verifying the length of my lines, making sure it completely goes around the top of the tumbler. I realized that's actually my lines for the bottom, so forgive me, but I went ahead and corrected that when I realized it didn't go around. Now your bottom lines will be facing up and then your top lines will be facing down. So they will basically be facing into one another. Now I'm going ahead and grabbing my transfer tape and cutting out some to cover the entire length of these lines. Now this part guys requires a lot of patience. I took it off and put it back on so many times because as the tumbler curves, the line starts to rise up and you wanna make sure it is at the bottom rim of the tumbler. So I just kinda of move it around until I have it perfect. And you wanna make sure you're holding it tight so it reduces any room for error. If it became too difficult, I went ahead and applied the first half and then started applying the other half afterwards. So here's a prime example of what I meant. 
you see the half in my hand is not on the tumbler, but the other half is already applied down. So I went ahead and make sure that was perfect and that that was applied. And then when I was ready, I lined it back up to apply the other half that is in my hand. This was the best way that I can find to apply this. So that half is down and I'm now lining up the other half for application. And if there were any lines that were off, I just took my weeder and took it off and then removed it or replaced it in that way. It's super easy once you get into the hang of doing it because you can just move some of the lines over to make sure they look as even and as straight as possible. Now I'm ready for the top half and I'm making sure that those lines are facing down towards the lines that I applied at the bottom. Now that all the yard lines are applied, I'm ready to add the Green Bay Packers printable vinyl here and I'm just going to add it in the middle of the top part of the tumbler. And then on the bottom, I'm going to put the name of my client. And here is the final product and I'm going to repeat the exact same steps on the next tumbler. So here are the tumblers after all the vinyl and the decals have been applied and I am so excited about how this turned out and it is ready for its last coat of epoxy. So guys, I did not record the final epoxy and I did add some glitter to the Mrs. Tumbler and it looks absolutely gorgeous guys. I am so excited with the way these turned out. As always, thank you guys for tuning into my channel. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and ring that notification bell. See y'all again soon.